Hello there, I'm Longbox55, uh, LB to you guys on the Gearhead site, or I guess it's what are you working on now is uh, what they call it now, uh, it's the old Stacy David site, I'm a regular on there, so, and uh, I'm going to do a little video demonstration on how to flare brake lines. Uh, on this demonstration I'm just going to use the tools that your average home mechanic is going to use. I'll do another one showing up with a professional grade tool. So let's get started and I'll show you the tools and then we'll get to using the tools. Okay, so what we have here is your basic brake line flaring kit. Uh, this particular one is a KD brand. Uh, they make pretty much all of the tools you're going to see like this out there are more than likely going to be a KD. Um, you'll want the one in the red box for your standard double flares. The blue box does uh, the metric ISO bubble flare. And the tool kit consists of a die stock. Which if you look inside, you've got ridges that hold the line and a bevel that actually allows it to make the 45 degree flare. This will also make single flares, um, but you don't want to use single flare on brake line. Uh, you can get away with it on fuel line, but really if you want a good tight seal you want to do a double flare. So you have your forcing screw with the cone. This is what you're going to use to actually deform the metal to make the double flare and most importantly and this is what differentiates this from a true from the single flare version of this tool is this double flare adapter which if you look in here there is a little recess that actually catches the line and makes it force out to make the double flare you also need a good cutting tool uh, these are about twelve dollars any car parts store, hardware store, what have you will have these. You want to get the bigger one that has the built-in reamer. They're not very expensive. Get a good one. Um, I did fail to mention this tool is about $20 at any given parts store. You know, depending on what your tax rate is and such. You also want a good metal file. Uh, fine cut. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, you know, a good, you know, just a good metal file. You don't want to use one you've been raking on wood with. Optionally, a good pair of vice grips. And these are genuine American made vice grips. You want to try to buy American as much as you can. Um, I'm not trying to make a political rant, but you're going to get a better tool. Um, I know the Chinese don't want to hear that, but I'm not saying the Chinese can't make a good tool. They can. But, well, you know support America okay so let's get started your first step is going to be to cut the line which basically you put the cutter tool on center it up in the rollers tighten it down and you don't need to tighten it down real tight you over tighten it you just wear out the cutter wheel now something you may notice is that there's a little groove in that cutter wheel or in the roller. That is if you just have to cut the flare off you can get right up against it and just take the flare off. That's very important you GM guys because General Motors has a nasty habit of using specialty fittings on their brake lines especially on the master cylinder. So you just basically go around tighten up every other turn or so and you just keep going. Uh, if it starts getting hard to cut, that's generally a sign that your cutter wheel is dull and you need to put a new one on it. Uh, most of these kits do come with at least one spare cutter wheel. So that's where your reamer comes in. You can see that we've got a little bit of a, a burr inside there. So you get in there and you just want to kind of ream it out. Clean it out real good. Make sure there's no burrs. So you got a nice, clean, true, round line. You go in with your file, uh, square it up if you need to. 
take off any burrs. You don't need to get carried away, just a light file. And then just go around the edge, just lightly to put a little bit of a bevel on it. So you want your line to look like this. Okay, now I'm not going to use this line for the demonstration. Uh, this line has paint on it and it will slip in the uh, die stock, which is not good because then you end up with a bad flare. All right. So you start by clamping the line in the tool and you don't want to clamp it down real tight right away because you have to position it properly in order to make the flare and this is where a lot of guys make their mistake. They leave too much or not enough sticking out of the flare. On the bottom of this tool you'll notice that there is a raised ridge that goes around. That's a gauge. So you line up the line so that the end of your line is flush with the end of the lip. Then you tighten things up. That's where the vice grips come in. You really do need to try to tighten this up as tight as you can get it because otherwise it will slip in the die stock and then you end up with a messed up flare. You also want to make sure everything's nice and straight and square in the die stock because if it isn't you end up with a crooked flare, and a crooked flare will not seal. Uh, never mind the fact it looks like crap. Um, it's just easier to do with vice grips. You could probably also stick a screwdriver or a pry bar in here. Uh, I have a pry bar handy. You could go in like this and tighten it up too. Either way will work. Uh, I find that vice grips or water pump pliers work better. So you got your good, you're nice and tight up in there. So then you take your appropriate size adapter, uh, in this case 5 16 Put the pin in the hole and you want to make sure you're seated up nice and square in the, um, the groove. Alright, I'm back. Uh, and a minor technical difficulty there. The piece that I was attempting to flare, uh, Apparently I didn't have it in the bar stock tight enough and it slipped. So I've got a different piece in here. You'll notice this is a much larger chunk. And I've really got this tightened in there really tight. Uh, I ended up having to use the pry bar to get it in there. I really don't like doing that, but that's what it took. So now we crank down the arbor. And you'll see in just a moment what I'm talking about on the upset procedure. Okay, so you turn it till it stops. And you'll notice that it's uh, flared it out. Pretty much filled up the whole bevel there. Okay, then you put the arbor back in. Run the forcing screw up and you put the cone in there and this does the second step of the flare where you actually fold the metal back on top of itself uh, now you something you may notice that I did and before you guys point this out obviously I did not put a fitting on there uh, but this is just a demonstration uh, if you're really doing it you want to make sure you put your fitting on or you'll be cursing yourself and well then there's all kinds of four letter words and you start to sound like a sailor like I do when I get mad. Uh, I never was a sailor but I was raised by one. Uh, the old man was in the Navy back in the 60's. So got it folded back upon itself. Oh boy that's tight. And my time is getting a little tight here. The YouTube and their constrictions. All right, and there you have it—one pretty much perfectly made double flare.